Why are you about to hop on the head and if you go where you just start laying them down? Okay, I'm jacked from here. I'm doing everything I'm going to add now. See, we, we, <laughs> we ought to do that. Sure. Right. I want to thank you guys for coming by. I really do appreciate it. You know, hopefully we make this a little bit more regular. Nice. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Oh yeah, let's try it. Oh, you just fucking spilled. Here's some key. Key. swimming with bullet. Ball. Uh, oh, Jesus, I'm yeah. spilling again, dude. Yeah, Batman yeah. Is too, yeah, dude. This for the homies. Yeah. So uh, for for some reason, I was about to ask you before we started filming. I was about to ask you about um, you know, uh, there, when you first come out to New Mexico, there's like this fucking. Um, so what like, mystic thing of like this paranormal stuff going on, right? And, like you were talking about uh, all these experimental jets you've been seeing flying around, you know, and possibly, uh, I mean, wow, dude, little micro drones that are following helicopters, you know, and this could be this could be all the future of what uh, you know could be raining down on us, whatever. But uh, as for the paranormal stuff that goes on, you know, around here, if you ever witnessed anything crazy, I remember hearing from, uh, I remember McFadden. Oh yeah. The skinwalker. The skinwalker, dude. Do you remember, you probably know that story better than I. I, I just remember it. He was really disturbed and freaked out about it. It's like, it was like. Who was sorry? Just real quick. Who was this? Rocket, a friend of ours. Yeah. Well, okay. Friend. Okay. Rest in peace, Rocket. Yeah. Uh, it was just on fourteen, past the reels, I think, and it's like, it looked like something hung, uh, bent over or something. You couldn't tell, and then it just stood up, turned around, and had this real wicked witch looking face and like a cave. Oh. And of course, you know, we get enough crazy people. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could probably name three or four people who that could have possibly been, but whatever he saw <laughs> really freaked out. Of course, I got, you know, a few friends, connections up on the res, and that kind of stuff is just commonplace. Mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of. Oh, that's legit. They got their own crypto paranormal police force that that's all they do is part of the police force that goes out to investigate you know Bigfoot they're part of the travel police skin walkers yeah they're part of the, the res police oh, yeah, JC Johnson who's also passed was a Bigfoot researcher but that was his thing Kreider went up there and did some work with him and then talking to my buddy George up there there's you know I mean they've had horses ripped in half and yeah. Stuff like that. I'm like, well, something's doing this. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, yeah, something's yeah. out here. Yeah. Nothing they're, doesn't rip my culture. Their culture accepts man. all those things. George says his brother saw like a lizard six feet tall standing on the highway, you know, on its back legs as he's driving his truck down to 666. They renamed the highway. But, <laughs> but, you know, he stopped, backed up, it was gone. But, then you hear stories of like the old western boomers supposedly when the Spaniards came out here and stuff there was still like a, a Komodo dragon type lizard running around six feet long or more and you know whenever they came across when they killed it because yeah it's just getting eaten but like there was a giant no because they're like fucking kill you fucking <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> kill you yeah. big fucking that's lizard. radical it's um the, the, you know it's it, there's no verification on that but there's plenty of accounts and stories and yeah. It's funny because I know that like Skinwalker Ranch or whatever, which I know but right. a ton of people have talked about how that's just a cash grab. They, mm -hmm. uh, either way, they talked a lot about orbs, right? Mm -hmm. And I had never really, okay, you remember the time when you were in my car. We were sitting out on Pioneer Way. We were with my brother Kenton mm -hmm. and we were looking out at these lights and every time we would say something, oh they would start doing what we were talking about. We'd be like, no, they yeah, look yeah, like yeah. people looking around. And then yeah, all of a sudden they start whipping around right. with their headlamps. Right, and, and here's the thing is, is in New Mexico, there is an abundance, if not just like, just, just way too much uh, anomalies in the sky. Well, right? there's that portal that someone took a picture of that, right? That is the craziest sky. thing. I meant to bring that up on the podcast. This is crazy shit, okay? I as far as paranormal shit goes, in New Mexico? this is the craziest thing. Um, I don't have the documentation. A couple months ago. Do you have the documentation? I've got at least one picture, and I shared it on Facebook. But then there was another person. The actually, the same. Actually, I heard there was there was another picture I saw. The first picture was from like uh, off 55A, somewhere mm -hmm. in that angle, and you could see where it was. It looked like it was right up behind us on the mountain up here, or right. over the top of us. It's really hard to tell. And then the second picture was from before the prison. So yeah. So it was a different angle. It was insane. It looked like it was the same object yeah. from a different angle. And then uh, 
someone told me that they got an account from somebody coming from the south and saw it from the other direction on the other side of the Ortiz. And what? And, so, and if so you could just two two views this way, one this way, and the right. same object sitting in the same yeah. location. And see, and what I and see, what I was going to say is the only thing that I've ever actually witnessed that besides that instance where we were sitting in my car and we were and like we were saying is like we would sit there and be like. No, it looks like they're walking around with torches, and all of a sudden yeah. they would start bobbing like people were walking around with torches. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is, is these things would uh, you could, it was like a directional spotlight. Yeah, you could you could see the beam. almost see where it was looking, quote, looking. Right? Yeah, like as if it was an eye of light kind of rolling around. It was weird, and so then was one, one, that was some weird shit. I, I and then say, one night I was driving home on yeah, 14. No, this was in 2019. I'm driving home on 14. And I thought, you know when you like, there's like uh, just a refraction of light and like someone's brake lights will create like a dash of orbs yeah. or whatever. It was like that, but it was one. And so it's right before you're coming towards us from Santa Fe, you come up over that hill before the Cerritos uh, turn, right? Mm -hmm. And so now you're kind of looking uh, down into the valley right before the bridge and it kind of veers this way. And this orb came from down in the Arroyo and I swear to God, and I was like, in utter awe in the moment I did not believe my eyes and it was like going across the road and then there's those three houses that share there's like a, I think there's a water tower on the property mm -hmm. but there's the big house and two other houses mm -hmm. and they all share one property and it went up in the gully in there and I came home and me and my lady didn't live together at the time mm -hmm. and I would call I called her that or we would call every night we would mm -hmm. call each other every night and I called her and I was like you're not gonna fucking believe what I'm telling you right now. Like, I'm not kidding you. I, and it's just weird because you brought up the uh, Skinwalker thing, and I know that orbs are a very common thing out there. Oh, there's on the, that range. Yeah, yeah. There's a. Uh, hold hold on, before we get too far, describe describe this object that we had several yes, views please. at the same so, location. So it just in the sky. it was like a transparent rectangle. Okay. Big rectangle in the sky. There was clouds. There was rain in different places. We just had rain. Uh, but it seemed as if, it, as, as if it was sitting level in the sky. Yeah. And yeah. from each angle, you could see, like, you know, it was like an, an uh, I don't know, an oblong trapeze or whatever the fuck they call it. <laughs> um, because you were at, at an angle looking at, like, a perfect square object or rectangular, or a rectangular object. object. You know, and, and it was crazy because, you know. It looked like a portal, like an opening is what it looked like. And then, it looked like an object. Yeah, it was like a transparent, like it blurred yeah. the, the sky. Yeah. But it wasn't dumb. Um, yeah, it looked so, some something weird, and, it, and, and the camera picked it and up. And I was I was home at the time. I had just gotten home, and uh, I don't know if it's related, but uh, suddenly a, a real big wind came up. You know how you get the dust devil? Yeah, just come you yeah, just comes blast. in and like blast everything around your house, and it's gone. And that's kind of what I thought. But then a friend of mine, Dave, lives up towards the mountain, he said he had the same kind of wind effect up there about the same time that when he was home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that's when it opened up. And yeah, yeah. Whoosh, I don't know. When it, my cousin Dason took him, Taylor, to a, uh, <laughs> that, it was like that wall with all the diagrams and shit on it with the aliens out that way oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what is that? What is on that? Because I never went and saw that. Oh, it's got to stay up with Bigfoot. Because it got, it got like graffiti yeah, recently. A bunch of kids got that one out there. Yeah, I guess it got. Oh, you're little. talking about out at La Cienega on the glyphs, or? I'm not no, necessarily. In, um, it's in Galisteo. Yeah. Oh, I got Road. Yeah, it was on ancient aliens. I heard it did. I don't know. I could be mistaken. But anyway, so no, it's a map of this side of the river. Okay. And it's blatantly, because there's the cave that mm -hmm. I found like years with Manny that has the, the red ochre with this, the guy with his hands up. Mm -hmm. That's carved on that wall. And in the on that wall, it shows it here. And, um, and then it's got all the mountains and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it shows the river. And if you were standing in front of that wall with a mirror, and had the behind you and held the mirror up, it would show you where all those locations were. Reverse it out in front of you. And oh, yeah, okay. You could, you and there's could, no aliens on it? Um, not really there. Okay, um, okay. But what it leads you to is a bunch of crazy alien shit. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you, when you, if you were to read that, and then there's the carving of the guy with his hands up, yeah. and it's a round head and the dot above it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were standing there and then went like this until you saw it, it would be that way. Okay. And then um, it's it's kind of like if it was if you put the wall behind you, it's kind of like on the same side 
that it is too. So like everything on the east side is on the east side. Okay, yeah. So it's so like it's, your rear view mirror. Yeah, you don't want to angle the mirror. You have to like hold it flat across the whole time. You can't like be in pivot to pivot. mirror. You have okay. to make the mirror flat with the wall. Okay. Um, but if you did that, it would tell you to go over there. And then if you we hiked all the way. This is we had already known where the cave was before we Jason took me to that wall. Yeah. So I already knew where the cave was that was painted with the man with his hands up. And in there, it's, I think it's like the opinion of the people that are afraid and they're held up like they are basically hostage. Mm -hmm. And then it's the, the shaman, which would be like, you know, the guy that was like, you know, the, the, the chief with all the mm -hmm. full headdress and all <laughs> yeah, this yeah. stuff. Yeah. The wise the guy. People. Yeah. The, the, the wise representable, guy. the representative of the fearful people are encountering somebody that's literally a textbook Roswell alien with three fingers and it's stepping out from a shadow and it has like a four or five pointed shooting star streaking above it like it's shit crashed and it's like coming out of the darkness like to greet yeah yeah like, oh yeah yeah like, um, what is it what is it they, they have like a like a bigfoot on back on the left i a, i think a creature standing there that yeah, if, they, if, if i remember the alien and the chief and, and the people are freaking out then like over here there's like the right legs missing which is some symbology but I yeah, thought I had I another um, yeah, I think it's a pretty huge it's a huge yeah. what's, the, well, the, what's the, the, the piece called part has got like all kinds of stuff all over yeah. do you know what the high rules are called you know they're named no I don't even they're know they're not even publicly really yeah. like a thing no, right? it, that property was a state park uh, in like the 20s but it was sold to private land in the 30s I think mm -hmm. and then uh so that whole area over there was just kind of lost, but on that wall, on the bottom, it says LB in caps, and then 1882. And if you Google search New Mexico LB 1882, it comes up with the 14th governor, and he created the curriculum for uh, New Mexico schools that didn't even exist at the time um, for the history, he created like the history curriculum he created. Wow. One was called A Historical Sketches of New Mexico, and it's the original account of the history. And he went, he was the president of the Historical Preservation Society for the Catholic Church. So oh, under wow. the authority of the Vatican, he went to all the Spanish mission churches and said, what's your history? I'm making yeah. the history of wow. the state I gotta check that before out. it was a state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this then, is like 40 years. This was no, 30 years. 30 years. It was in 1881 and in 1882. Yeah. Do you think this dude was kind of, do you think he could have just shifted the history to be like, because all of this paranormal, like cult kind of stuff going on no. in the state? He, no, okay, he goes in there and he says that all the governors before him looted the land and destroyed the records. Right. And then he said that he had to start from the Pueblo Revolt and go to the Spanish mission churches and ask the church for the history wow. because the government destroyed it over and over. Yeah, wow. a good dig. Um, and then he said that, uh, like, you know, the account of Coronado getting hit in the head with the rock and all that? Mm -hmm. and that's directly from his books. Um, the, uh, <laughs> so, basically, every New Mexico history book we have today is plagiarized from his eight historical sketches of New Mexico from 1882 or 1883. What's really crazy, this is just an interesting fact about New Mexico. Did you know that, like, we haven't, oh, maybe you were the one that I was talking about. Yes, that I got. Sorry. <laughs> You're okay. Uh, come on, Bob. Uh, I was trying to pull up a three-toed alien picture I got. <laughs> um, I maybe you were the one that I was talking to about this, but, uh, I lost my train of thought, god damn it. The um an interesting guy coming in Mexico. Oh yeah. Oh, none of our laws have changed. Whoa, it uh closed. Yeah, hit the uh hit the button. Oh um, anyway, it's a three toed L and we were over in Tucum Carry. Okay. And uh we came I mean it's monsters out there. You get up on those Mesa faces and shit. You have no idea driving through there that I mean it makes this stuff look like that's crazy. Could you text us that image, please? Uh, if I can find it. Okay. okay. If I can call my phone, it, it's my like cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, it was, it, it was a panel, so it had the three-toed alien, with three fingers, mm -hmm. you know, round head, and and he's holding like a rod first, this way. First, uh, 
pointing example in one direction mm -hmm. and then like six feet so over that's what's on the wall. is, is it's a an man LED. with a bow and arrow and, and in between there's all these thing. monsters one looks just like a mastodon with big tusk and I mean this whole panel like dinosaurs and see, mastodons see, with the alien on one side the governor, so he was the law of the governor the and the uh, bow and arrow and the arrow and like they're hunting person. the same animals well, yeah, they're killing the nothing monsters, in his I way think. To yeah. stop him from it makes you wonder. State. Do you let me just ask you this? Do you think if aliens roamed on Earth and alongside and humans at some point, let's just say they crash landed and they had to live here for a while? I'm not even saying like in reality, I'm saying it just hypothetically speaking. Do you think that they would be able to consume what we eat? I think they'd find a food source, it might be us. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, you know, a protein shake or something. Yeah, 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 something that's got like something yeah. similar to what they have. Yeah, yeah. So if you type in that, it's the first thing that comes up on Google search. Okay. Oh, Bradford. Okay. Yeah, and, and then you go down to this guy, and then if you look at his works. And this is the governor guy? Okay, yeah. sure. And this is the governor guy? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. nice. And then when you literally type in what is on Dason's wall, except for I added New Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a point. Yeah. But yeah. literally it's LB1882 and it comes out. L. Bradford Prince, yeah. Yeah, we'll get some pictures together next time and we can really delve pictures. into that. So your scenario with the aliens and what they can eat, yeah. No, yeah, I just, you know, I wonder yeah, because... I mean, uh, you know, who knows what aliens, I mean... It's not a question whether they <laughs> might have been here. Well, the reason I ask that is because they're pointing it. Pointing at animals. Is there a fucking air in my face? Yeah, you got a bunch of ash. ashes. Ashes? Your... <sighs> um, it didn't look like a hunting party. It doesn't look like a hunting no, party. No. Okay, it looks like they're like killing off. Some big nasty shit. Okay, okay. That was you know, kind of where my question you know, was. The like. Hopis taught, and there's the hero mythology and stuff where they sent the heroes out ahead of that. The ant people said they could go to the top and on the last time they came out. Were the ant people, Bob? Do you want to tell us more about the ant people? Uh, so let me lead this in a completely different direction. Bob, so when we did the interview with you, yeah. you had mentioned a the fact that they would bring up prayer and oh, the, the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning. Of the, yeah, the beginning. The morning, I, don't mean to, I know I yeah, brought that up later on. TV here. went off at like 11 o'clock at night. So, so there was no TV past 11. After the news, maybe midnight, then okay. Johnny Carson, then it was 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, then the cable came in, then you had info commercial shit. Yeah, yeah, okay. Stuff all night, but yeah, so, when I was a kid, there was no TV. Was it, was it normal for you as a family to sit around the table? Or would you watch TV, listen to the radio? No, I was usually like up by myself, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, what kind of kid were you? About that big. Yeah? Yeah. All no. the time. Now, All the time. Until you were 50? Yeah. Until you were 50. Yeah, and even, even then you'd have to get up and get early to school, so, you know, it's still dark in the winter, and, and they'd still play the national anthem, and sometimes it was like the Air Force anthem with the F-104 flying and the prayer yeah. about closer to God, and, and then they had a, a little sort of news, and they had gospel or barbershop quartet shit. Nice. Yeah, nice. a little hokey dokey out of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of remember something like that actually. And then the Today Show. So uh, then you went to and school. And then the Today you Show. Went to, you went to school. <coughs> What'd you do? How'd you get to school, man? Walk. You walked to school. How long did you walk? Oh God, it, it, we had longer to walk than most kids. Uh, <laughs> most kids in the school. I, I would say it was close to a mile. So you get to school through town, all the way to the other end of town. Well, hold up, school. before we get go into this, mm -hmm. how did you live in a religious area? Let me ask you that. Well, uh, yeah, Indiana is the Bible Belt. It's mainly okay. Christian. It's yeah. it, you know whatever denomination, Lutheran, Presbyterian. So a lot of the kids you went to school with were, huh? A lot of KKK out there. <laughs> not, not. <laughs> you know, although it was White County, and they used to have a sign. I remember in the courthouse says, "This is White County." We intend to keep it that way. What? Yeah. No. Whoa. You're fucking kidding me. So that's the fucking people you grew up around. I yeah. mean, like they were like the older folks, but you know. Uh, or was that like the minority? I mean, was it racist though? I mean, or was it just a joke on the? In my family, you, you could say the F word, 
and not what die, but it use the N word and you get the shit beat out of it. You know, or, you know you'd be like. Right, he fucked up. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, what about in your area? You know, not really. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a vast now, minority. If you go there now, the county's half Hispanic. And yeah, it's, right. it's, it's. So they couldn't keep it that way. It, Yeah, it's. So they didn't you know. keep it that way. <laughs> no, they weren't able to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, but damn. I, uh, you know, I mean, there was still two water fountains in front of the courthouse. The and that one were like. The one people wasn't working, so there was only one when I was a kid. And, but we had no black people in the county. That's funny. Mike, Your county's so poor that it, in segregation because the other fountain doesn't work. Remember, That's Mike crazy. said that he hadn't seen a black person until he was fifteen. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That, when when was the first person, the first black person, first person you saw? Real person with color. Oh, I'm sh I, when I was a kid, we go shopping in Lafayette or Logan Sport. Oh, they're, Lafayette. They're in the black community. <coughs> they're. Yeah, I mean, I was going up there. And, and the, was huge in India. And the black folk out there are quite religious as well, right? I mean, like basically everyone is. Back then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, some uh, really good friends or family were, you know, I, nobody was really, you know, I didn't, it, it, when you say that, it was, it was like, there are some people that went to church every Sunday. My family, uh, uh, Well, let me put it this way. I consider myself religious, but I don't go to church every Sunday. Yeah, there's, yeah, well, I mean. There's a million of them, right? You know, church isn't religion. Church, yeah. Especially now with the 5013 C's and the CIA infiltration of the <laughs> pulpit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. And how they give the 4 a.m. talking points and they indoctrinate them to the seminaries. It's part of the whole, like, subversion of the education system. They've totally captured organized religion. That's why they were setting up jab clinics in the parking lot. And, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. closed down. Any, any church I would have gone to in this pandemic, uh, if, if they even thought about not having services or any of this crap, I, I would have been done with it. Then. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're proving that you believe that God is well, right. Yeah. I mean, you don't really believe in God at that point. And, and you know, 80% of the fucking churches in this town, in this county, yeah. fly gay flags. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I, yeah. And that is fucking... And see, that's what I mean. It, there, there's research you can do on how the, you know, just like Operation Bird and infiltrating the media, they definitely went after we oh, yeah. organized religion a long time oh, yeah. ago and, and talk hours about that but, yeah, yeah but if you look I mean, at the look the 5013c and they came out you know and so they, they, they even at one point i don't remember i think it was under obama's thing where they were threatening churches if they didn't talk about certain things and didn't talk about certain things mm -hmm. and then they they take their 5013 tax that's back. fucking crazy. Which that whole tax break thing started back under uh, Constantine when they had, I, I think it was the Council of Nicaea or, or one of them, where they finally came together and decided on one doctrine. And then if you, the incentive for supporting that doctrine was you didn't have to pay taxes on your shit. Yeah. And that started way back then, you know. Right, right. Yeah. That's interesting. So basically putting you on the level of. You know, clergy is almost kingship. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's the only, you know, Constantine didn't have some epiphany. He just was astute politically. And, right. And uh, already a lot of the very wealthy people were already kind of converting over to Christianity or looking at it as another god, mm -hmm. along with their other pantheon of gods that they were worshiping. And, and they were actually pouring a lot of money into the early church they were getting tax breaks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the reason I bring this all up is just because we're doing a series here soon, Dismantled, yep. which has a lot to do with that aspect. Oh, there's it. a whole, I, you, I don't know, you, you once men, mentioned uh, Cam Clement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, but featured him. but yeah. I mean, I, I also follow what's going on with the uh, kind of the revival restoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, Marillo, uh, Hank Kuderman, uh, Amanda Grace, who gives out the word of the Lord. There's a great one, Julie Green. She puts a little bit up every day. She's been incredibly accurate. You know, uh, I'm, I tuned into her. She says, oh, uh, uh, a senator or, or a congressman's going to die. And like three hours later, that gal in Indiana had the head on and died, you know. 
That's yes. right. Oh, was that was the gone. woman that Biden just yeah. referenced? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, we're we're just God yeah. bless our fucking souls. Yeah. Um, so Jackie, <laughs> Jackie, yeah, that was her name. Um, so the reason I bring this all this up is just, do you see? Since you know you're obviously the oldest of us. Obviously, obviously Bob. Very. Um, very uh, do you see? Oh, do you see a uh, oh, three of you put together? Problem. No. Yeah, probably. Do you see a degradation in society with the lack of religion? Let me put it that way. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's like you can take it another step, just the moral fiber. Uh, it, it's all in their playbooks, all Linsky's, you know, handbook for radicals. I mean, you go back to what the commies and the KB, KGB, what McCarthy was going after in the 50s, back to the 30s. I mean, it's it's a concerted effort to subvert that. It's actually go back to 1800s and Oscar Wilde and the Theosophists and and that's when the occult stuff started coming forward and people were having seances. It's always been in question and what are you know most of our modern interpretation of religion is only a couple hundred years old. Even things like the Rapture and stuff like that. that was a good yeah, like the New Testament. Uh, is the, it, that's the New the Testament. New, right? the new, rapture. new newest testament. Yeah. Oh, the oh, newest, oh, newest oh, testament. Yeah. 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 Did you go to school? Like first grade? No, first grade. Right. Oh, yeah, first grade. Say that again, just first grade. And dropped out then, right? It was like, oh, kinder- yeah. it was like, yeah. it was like kindergarten and first grade. Now, right? hold on, like now, hold on. Have you ever been uh, subjected to religion? Not really. I don't go to churches anymore. And then okay. before he follows up, was, there, was it very old? Churches or whatever. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Was it religious in Texas? Because you lived in Texas for a while, right? I don't remember. Oh, you were too young. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My so, in, it, so you never went to school. Period. You always been first grade. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, have you noticed any? Um, have you? Do you have any like connection with religion at all? Even. Do you find yourself to be religious in any regard? <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. Religion is a cult. The word yeah. itself is misused. You know. Exactly. We're That's talking right. about faith and belief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my father. And my that's, father definitely that supersedes that. any kind of organized religion or dogma yeah. or you know things that don't stand up under the test. And when you talk about the Quakers, I point that out in my book as well. About it's about the direct connection that we each have. Yeah. Like, so mm-hmm. no man has power over anybody else. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's, but and then it goes into the sovereign. Yeah. The sovereign, Quakers did a lot about sovereign that. before God. I even got a section in there where I ran into this group up in Chama one time. Uh, they were the, uh, like the children of heaven or something they called themselves. So their kids didn't have social security numbers or driver's license. They were bringing other kids in, other families to send their yeah. kids out there so they could you know, be a part of that. And they believed that we're living in the thousand year reign uh, and that the only law is God's law and man's law is below that. So they just, and they, you get the Quakers, the uh, Mennonites, mm-hmm. you know, the similarities that, but I kind of added that element in the book too. Uh, the fact that, you know, religion across the world adds a certain diversity even fabric to just a philosophical search for understanding what it's all about, really, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Some claim to have the answers, more you look at all of them. I, 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 I've, I've looked at a lot of stuff, and uh, it's always trying to find the lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. And when you get to Christianity, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament, those two separate books, they weren't mm-hmm. even joined together until quite a, a while after that, when they finally decided on what they're going to put out there. But, uh, so leading back into what you were saying, Taylor, uh, you don't find yourself. Yeah, you know, and let me let me uh, kind of add to the question. You don't find yourself to be religious uh, with all the stuff that you know about, like just science. Let me ask him a question. <laughs> please do. Please do. Because, yeah, because have you ever had a religious epiphany? Have you ever had an experience that that seemed to come from somewhere else that? moved you in a way that you weren't moved before. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's fair. I mean, I think that, I think it's those kind of experiences that really get people, yeah. like, I was tuned in to thing. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I had, one of the weirdest of my life was, yeah, when, when 2016, I, when they uh, nominated Trump, you know, I never watched TV, I've never seen The Apprentice or him 
in its reality show. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Donald Trump, whatever, you know. And I'm thinking, well, this is like running Sarah Palin. She, she didn't have a chance. They want to put Trump up there just to to put on this show because I would have bet every penny I had in the house and everything that Hillary's going to win. Cause, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's just absolutely no doubt in my mind. I did watch a few of the didn't even watch the debates. I watched a few of the speeches that Trump has given right up to the election. I thought, well, wow, you know, a populist candidate like this with this message might actually resonate with a lot of people. So yeah. this is going to be interesting. So I watched the election returns. And of course, I knew like at nine o'clock Trump was going to win long before they announced it. Just like I, I this last election, I turned it on at a, a nine our time, which is seven Eastern or, or seven our time, nine Eastern time, and saw the first returns from Virginia at one percent. They gave it to Biden. And I just turned off the phone. I said they're going to cheat. Yeah, they've got the cheat going, and I didn't look at anything for two days because then you know because I already knew. I mean, just I've watched so many elections and how you know how you can interpret the data. And, mm -hmm. and well, imagine how I felt. Spin. So anyway, yeah. my epiphany was that morning when I woke up and realized what happened because I'd read the 16-year plan that Hillary was going to get us into war. I mean, there's no doubt, you know, we would have had a pandemic that been played out so differently. It was all on paper, you know. Mm -hmm. And instead of going around doom and gloom, I just figured we were all screwed and just have to see what happened and she's going to get in there and <laughs> time's real short, you know. Yeah. And then when I woke up in the morning, I realized I had this over this flooding stream of joy and I'm just crying and I got tears. I mean, literally came out of nowhere because right. it, it really hit me here, you know. Mm -hmm. Nicole, there's and then I walked down the street kind of like, wow, who am I going to see? Go in the coffee shop and there's people <laughs> yeah. literally in there crying and stuff. Dude, I forgot about that. Dude, it's just like, dude. Yeah, remember when Biden was talking? Oh yeah, dude, when Biden won, he was like, dude, <laughs> all the way from up in my house, I could hear people just screaming, dude. you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, but the Trump won. Well, they had their BM march, too, and that didn't like, play out. So oh, my God. Yeah, that one didn't matter. Dude, they, their gay bribe parades are pathetic. I mean, it's just, it really is a micro. When you well, shrink see, it down yeah. into a microcosm, yeah. it really am it highlights and amplifies well, the sickest parts of it. You know? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> not gonna, I'm not going judge to it, judge it that way. I just think it's very interesting to live in this little microcosm yeah, of, of experience extreme diversity from one side to the other uh, and the new things going on and all this it, it just it's a lot more it's it's very urban in the fact that it, you know you encounter a lot of people and there's usually something going on and you can be in a big city and you don't get out of the neighborhood it's all what's going on in the hood well, our hood it's this little town if you go up in a balloon above and look around there's nothing around it <laughs> you know there's See Taylor's place, and it's like, you know, res. <laughs> you know, everything in the mountains over here. There, you were just stuck out here. It's, it's uh, kind of like a petri dish. Yeah, when you talk about like experience God directly, then you should expect to experience this? God directly. And it has a little yeah, feet and, and, the and you have arrow, and you have some arrows, arrows on the other side. side. Yeah, and no, and, you know, and it's funny that you were talking about how. And I go right behind. <laughs> Yours yeah, was from political because mine, this. you know, a lot of people I wouldn't consider my experience political because mine was like a multi-year journey, and then right? I, the world, there's a rock well, well, I, I would like, refer to it as a universe for a long time, right? right? Uh, the universe. Yeah. The universe. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, which I mean, I don't find so anything type, wrong with that, to the heart but I personally have found it as a cop out to God. And so, Years ago, I was driving my piece of shit, that car that is, I cut the roof off out the top here, yeah. out there. Fire pit and I'm driving that back when that was my daily driver. I'm driving home from Madrid, and I just remember I was on the S-curves. So you you go through the S-curves right out of Madrid, right before the big switchback. And I'm driving on that little straightaway right there, and I just remember telling him, quote unquote, the universe. And I was like, just give me, like I know you got to let other people succeed, but just give me a time to time to succeed, and I promise, like I'll um, donate money, like I'll, I'll donate my time, yeah. I'll donate my soul, kind of thing. Yeah. And then 
I worked for, I got heart, two yeah, straight no, years no, of work in the movies, and yeah. I was making like <clears> great <throat> money, <throat> and so I ended up donating a bunch. But anyway, it's my point being. Yeah, and see, so you never trade for money. And, and, and then, for work. Work. exactly. Like, this is where the and like, are at the end of the general it was crazy world. because I got the and work. The, the, the I, you know, and like you're saying, wasn't necessarily praying for money, but I was praying for being able to live comfortable, being able to like, you know, provide for my tribe. And I got to a point where I was able to do so, and then I was like, man, I need and to take a break. With the dog. I need to fucking quit and cigarettes. The location and this, there was a few other things, yeah. but to shorten it a bit, it, in real life, it ended up being the pandemic. I took. I was like, I'm taking a break. Pandemic hit. I was one of the people who freaked the fuck out in the very beginning. I was scared so to death because I was. Uh, I had asthma when I was a kid, so you know, I you know, they got in my head. I had two collapsed lungs. Yeah, you know, and so I was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. Good. no, they got me for it's, sure. It's the, the first okay. month, I was, I was got. I had bleach yeah, rags in all my cars, yeah. and um, and I'm not afraid to admit it. <clears throat> I needed to quit cigarettes. Like in my head, I was like, I need to quit cigarettes. Pandemic happened. I got scared to death. Every time I had a little itch in my throat, I'm smoking and fucking a pack a day, and every time I have a little itch in my throat, I think I have COVID. And I'm gonna die. And then I kept waking up in the middle of the night three times in the first month of the pandemic. I light the uh, filter on my cigarette, and which would give me a really bad itch in my throat for the no, rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so basically, I was like, all right, so March 24th, 2020, I was like, I'm fucking done. And I quit cigarettes. For you. And then about two weeks, probably about two weeks later, me and my lady were like, this is probably bullshit, but I mean, you know, yeah. and then me and him were also talking about it. There were certain things that I wanted to get a primary care physician last year, but I was really worried because of the vaccine mm. was a massive, you know, they're really pushing on people and I, you know, really yeah. wasn't about to take that shit. And um, a bunch of shit happened this year medically that kind of pushed me to get a primary care physician right. and all this yeah. stuff. And me and him had talked about how you kind of have to like suffer to earn your position, you know what right. I mean, in like in like God's light, yeah. if you were to put it in like layman's terms or yeah. whatever. And that was kind of my religious journey was just like asking for comfortability, getting it, and then I wanted to buy this property, and then I was able to buy this property, and it was just like this long, like it I said, it was years. With you, man. You just guys are getting started. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. Well, we got to lose it all first. And yeah, no, I had my first, when I was a child, we... I live two blocks from the Christian church and the library is right next door. So, you know, we weren't, my family wasn't that religious, but they would get involved in certain things at church, go on Easter Sunday and stuff like that. But send us off to, to uh, Sunday school. And I was always excited because I had two older brothers already in school. Sunday school sounded good to me, you know. I want to go in here and find out what all of this is. Yeah, yeah. What's going on here, you know. Yeah. What are we talking about today? And sing all this stuff, Jesus loves me and all that stuff. Yeah, and we'd get our little suit signs. <laughs> yeah. Walk, you know, the, yeah. my three brothers and I walked to church. And, uh, and you know, I, I was like, you know, first year or so, it's more like daycare. And uh, that's when I met Rocket. He was in there, you know, like five years old. Yeah. And then they put you next year, you're downstairs where they got a Sunday school teacher. And it's like, well, wait a minute. There's some great Bible stories and things like this, but let's talk about God, you know. I mean, they, they couldn't give me any answers, even as a kid, that made any sense, except, you know, I was walking under a tree one time and looked up and saw the sun, and I go, uh, God's everywhere. You can't see God, but God can see you. Uh, you can talk to God, and sometimes He talks back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just kind of like grooving on that whole thing when I was like five, and the message that came in, you know, back from God was uh, everybody dies. And I thought that was the greatest fucking news. You know, it's like everybody's in the same car, it doesn't matter who's driving, we're all going off same time this is yeah. all temporary yeah and then i started getting the concept of time like well okay i'm i can't wait till i'm eight to be a cub scout which you know, i didn't last long there god man i wish i fucking but, had that but, but then i, I real, wait till then i realized you know you know in so many years you become a teenager then an adult and the rest of your life you're an adult so being a kid is like i realized even then it's kind of a special time you get away with a lot of shit you're just a kid you know you're growing up into something, you're, you're changing, getting bigger, all this stuff happening to you. It's like, 
that wasn't lost on me, but then it's like a progression and, and we all die, you know. Uh, pandemic, asteroid, whatever else, you know, that's where we get back to the fear in the pandemic. It's like, what are these people afraid of dying? You know, and they're going to wear a mask for the rest of their lives. It's going to fuck you up because you, you, you're afraid you're going to die. You, you might know, cough take a anything in your arm. You know, Drive it in their car. You are going to die. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a straight question. You're in the fucking prison cell, dude. Talking cold steel fucking bed. <laughs> Again? Again, dude. And you know you're going to die. You're going to execution this car. Oh, well. Tonight is your last meal. My last meal? Your last meal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, already, I already got that figured out. What is it? It's a slab bluegill, morel mushrooms, fried squash with rhubarb pie. It's crazy you want bluegill. And if the mushrooms are out of season, then that's their bad. They're just going to have to wait. Yeah, try it. Yeah, They're just going to have to wait. Morels. Yeah. Morels are never in yeah. season. It's like that was, my birthday. <laughs> that was like my birthday dinner that my grandmother make because her birthday was the day before. It was in April, so nice. everything was in season and that would be it. Nice. Yeah. That's what's up. That's cool. Wait, 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 then, then, then uh, you, you, uh, if you had one song to listen to, or no oh, radios, because you're too cr- you're too much of a fucking risk, dude. We can't even give you a radio, because you'll kill everyone. I don't listen to much music for the radio, but uh, I suppose uh, I played for what it's worth at my brother's funeral in 72. You know? You know, probably with Buffalo Springfield. Nice. Hey, now what's going down? That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. You can play brother? that one, but yeah. It's a few, a few more. Yeah, and my, my brother Dan, he was going to be drafted, so he enlisted in the Navy and became a uh, Navy corpsman. And, and for uh, Vietnam? Yeah, this, and in 72, <laughs> he was serving at Let's Naval see. Air Station in Milton, Florida, on his way to work. He had an accident, but he got like the full military. I never heard of that dude. Yeah. That's 72. Wild. That's wild, man. Right. Sorry, I think I right missed it, I and I feel like a piece of shit that I'm yeah. asking you to say this again. How did he pass, if you don't mind? In a car in accident. accident. In a car accident. Did you say that? Yeah. Okay, my apologies. Hey, Doug, what about you, Taylor? <clears throat> you got a fucking single song you would listen to before you fucking die? No. No? You know, I've had this conversation with you. You don't like songs unless they have, like, a story. No. What is your music thing here, dude? Just like, words are all stupid. Words are all stupid, man. Yeah. Because well, it just ruins whatever the, the, the beat is, or the song itself, whatever the jam is. Well, we can do ruined. an instrumental. I mean, shit. Yeah, yeah, but, dude, yeah, yeah. Sure like, what about some uh, Mozart or some Beethoven? <sighs> whatever. Uh, you, you, uh, would, you, would you jam that? You're not. Okay, let me music. ask you this. Let you me ask music. you this. Are right, these people that don't care about music? He's gonna have a jack in the box handle on the side of his casket, see anybody's got balls enough to turn it in. <laughs> well, dude, this guy actually introduced me to some of the most wicked music actually I've ever heard, and more of uh, respecting sound for just being sound and vibration and like the ability of just if you like just sound. Oh, in general, well, no, you get into that. It's he, incredible. He, Dude, Philip Glass. This guy turned me on to Philip oh, Glass, yeah. which is, you know, what just is, a side note. He's in every movie ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Soundtrack music. Yeah. You, you know about the different frequencies of music and sound. And, right. And, and how the cathedrals and, and, were like built. And, and it yeah. used to be, correct me if I'm wrong, it used to be 432 tuning was the yeah, standard. Yeah, changed it. And, and, and the late 30s and the Nazis, the Germans that were a big part of this, to get that international music organization to tune everything to what, 440? Which is quartz, right? Which is the same as quartz? Yeah. So, so if you look at, you know, uh, what do they call it, somatics or uh, where they take like the patterns of water or sand and the sound patterns and forms all this. Yeah. I mean, Taylor was shapes. making it happen so on the TV. At 432, <laughs> you've got this real harmonic vibration with 440 is a discordant vibration and even the Nazis knew that over time that's why they did it that it creates discord it creates dissatisfaction and, well it's and funny that you bring agitation agitation it's, it's funny that you bring this up because remember we were watching he of course showed me this thing I didn't find this on my own by any means but he showed me this thing where they take a transmitter and a receiver and they send 440 frequency out of the transmitter 
and then they put like cancerous tissue in between yeah, the transmitter, and then they can beam you with cancer or something. Yeah. Oh, no. Just, it's no, it oh, it out. Oh, because it takes the information and it puts it no. into the signal. There, there and was, it, it'll deliver it to your cell. There was, because everything runs on like a 443. There, there was an institute in France back in the late 60s, early 70s, I think it was called. It gives you the symptoms the of the Institute, wild Where they were, they were actually it's doing bad. that. They it's were, uh, they could uh, take a healthy cell frequency mm -hmm. and broadcast it, you know. Keep uh, everyone healthy. Into uh, a disease cell and heal it. But inversely, they could take a disease cell and, and transmit, transmit it. that. And you know, then you got harp antennas and all this crap they're doing. <laughs> so they can do it by satellite, yeah. like but, you said. Oh, but, dude, they but, can do it by satellite. French socialist yeah. government came in in like 72, they shut the whole thing down. And that's interesting because that's like one of the cures, and you get into uh, uh, Oregon and, and what was his name, uh, Reich. Uh, oh yeah, the, the, the yeah, yeah. yeah. those things uh, are crazy, and they're little you know, devices. It, interesting cute. thing that that uh, you know, like Trump talked about, and they gave him all this shit about. Uh, well, maybe we could put the light in the body if UV yeah, light. You if UV like light that. kills it, maybe we could. It's real technology. And everybody's like, what? You gonna stuff a UV light down your throat? Yeah. You know? And it was. I, I, I also mentioned other things like the the chloral oxide or whatever it is, which is a, a disinfectant. Yeah, but, but, but if you go yeah. back and research, just research the cure that time forgot, and this is during the 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, they were looping your blood through a UV light, just like mm -hmm. water treatment. And okay. Five to seven or eight percent of your blood at a time. And it was curing cancers, curing everything. It was the cure time for God. Pharmaceutical companies didn't like it. Rockefeller yeah. didn't like it. Oh yeah. They wanted all their shit. So that got like kicked to the curb. But that's what Holy he was referencing. Holy shit! That's uh, that's here's an, interesting, light, here's an interesting aside. There you go. Can you turn them on? Yeah. Here, here's an aside. In. Since you guys are here, and I don't <laughs> talk to you very often, but you you know the relationship between Nikolai Tesla and Trump, right? No. Yeah, his fucking his uncle, John Trump's Trump uncle, was John Trump, an MIT physicist, and, and he when, investigated when, saw the papers. When Tesla died, Trump's uncle was the guy that, that was like searched his apartment. Well, no, went through all his all his stuff. papers, all of his all of his job all of his to go through and try to figure what they had out. And then he said, "Oh, there's nothing there." And Donald had said that his uncle John was a mentor, and they spent a lot of time together. So, you know, it tells me that at least... But he had Donald to say, and he shoved it under the desk. He said, oh, there's nothing in any well, of these papers. That, I'll take them. No, there, there's more to that story. Well, there's all the missing trunks that, you know, yeah, they didn't say there wasn't that something story. there. Yeah. 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 So you think Trump is a time traveler? No. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, you don't think so? <laughs> well, I mean... Dude, dude I'm you, going full you on. You get into the... Fat it up years to You know about the kids' books and the... Yeah, yeah, the kids' books are Baron Trump. Yeah, Baron uh, yeah. Trump's Amazing Adventures. Yeah, it's funny to look like, into those, you know. Yeah, I love a good story. Yeah, a guy but. named, uh, what was his name, Lockwood or something like that, which... Yeah, we, he it sounded was, like a moniker. It was all, the, these three moniker. children's books were published in the 1890s, The Wonderful Adventures of Baron Trump, and his dad was the president on hotels, and people hated him. And, yeah, some and, of the dancing, just, light, the streets yeah, even light up. Yeah, it's all weird. It's really weird, but it's all written in... 1890, yeah, you know, but it's like describing. <laughs> it's a cool conspiracy. Theory. Yeah, there's a lot of cool shit to look into. That's a, that's a oh, what the fuck, yeah. dude? Y'all, okay, this is like some. This is has like nothing to do with like governmental conspiracy shit. There's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle where the dad wakes up and he's like, "Holy fuck, darling, I just had this crazy nightmare." And she's like, "What's up?" And he was like. I was this fucking crazy meth dealer who used to be a fucking teacher, mm -hmm. and I fucking dude. He explains Breaking Bad <laughs> the what? entire to the T, the entire yeah. plot of Breaking Bad. I'll show Malcolm you. Malcolm in the middle. Yeah. Malcolum in the middle. He wakes up in the middle or in the more early That's... in the morning, and he's like, and he wakes his wife up, and he's like, what the fuck. I just had this crazy, and he's like, I went back, and there was this student that I used to teach chemistry to, and the dude, he like explains the whole thing, uh, the whole thing, and he's see, like, see, and that's when predictive programming like goes like, whoa, that's a little crazy. Uh, you'd have to investigate, see if the writer for that show has had any, had any, 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 any yeah, if it's sitting on that script. Well, it's funny and sometimes ideas and movies and stuff sit for a long shelf, time. Yeah. 
Well, it's yeah. funny because Mike Myers, you know, the guy who played Austin Powers, yeah. so he did this movie way back in the day where he said something about, like, you know, he was, like, playing the dad, you know, he plays multiple characters in a lot of his movies. He was, like, the dad in one of these movies, and he was like, oh, the Pentavrit! Yeah. And he's like, the fucking Pentavrit are these five men, and da-da-da, they're elites. And then he made a movie recently called The Pentavrit. And then if you look at it, there's an interview that he did, and he's like, oh, well, I was thought it was funny, and it was right in the middle of the COVID thing where right. everyone's questioning the experts. Yeah, right. And he said that uh, he was basically like, I thought, you know, I grew up trusting the experts. Everyone that I knew trusted the experts. So it was weird to me that no one trusts the experts anymore. So I wanted to make a movie where it was like the Illuminati was running the shit, but they were all really nice guys. Yeah. And that's what the Pentagon is. But it's weird to, you were saying, you'd have to ask the dude who wrote it or whatever, and it's funny because that is one of the situations, and he, like, swears it's innocent. Yeah, you know, it's researchable, that's good. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's researchable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I look at that, like, can I, is there any way to research that? And most often there is. There's the weird thing with the Google search where it'll only give you, like, ten answers, no matter how many pages you go through. Yeah, dude. I've noticed that. You'll go to the next page, you start getting repeats. Yeah. Like, motherfucker. And it'll do it for like a thousand pages. And then it was like because companies pay to have yeah, theirs so first. Yeah, yeah. But if they pay the most to have theirs first, there's, there's the first on the first hundred pages. Wow. Now people say, well, where so do you weird. find this stuff? And it's like, we don't have to go to the dark web, but then it's, it's like, it's just, it's taken years and years to find resources. And I'm finding new stuff all the time. But it's, uh, you know, you go, you got to find, go to some strange places to find out, like there's the theory of everything on YouTube, you know, five hours of him talking to physicists about consciousness and stuff like that, you know, so, but yeah, the, but he interviewed the, the uh, guy named Panis who had all the Navy patents for the XR3, the TR3B, the flying triangles and the yeah. ionic propulsion and, and, and when that, information came out with patent. They said, oh, that's just maybe misinformation, make the Russians think we have. And the guy had never done an interview with anybody until he did an interview with Kurt Jaimungo on Theory of Everything. And, and, you know, he's still, he's working for Space Force now. He's French. He described in general theory how it works, but I can't tell you the details. He said, that's state secrets, but it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. this shit's real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, even though it was all poo-pooed, you know. Yeah. And, well, it's, uh, and there's things like that. So, so just it's all about making connections, information. Google, I don't. Even, right, the web is uh, the web of your mind, and and all the information you can kind of connect together and be like, I've seen this before. You know, it just kind of repeats yeah, itself. Yeah, like, you know, like Brian, you keep skipping over the flat Earth shit, and then you find something there that's really, right. really good. You know, and you know that you can always. <laughs> get you know, I mean, you got to get in around that yeah. shit. You got to get your hands dirty. Is that pipe going? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I do really like the uh, like the Tartarian thing with the that is fascinating. Deal. I'm still on top dude. Of explain that. The, explain this, please. Um, yeah. There used to be like giant airship blimps, man, and they oh, destroyed yeah. it with the Hindenburg as a massive publicity stunt against blimps, and they and killed is, the industry. And this so. is the Tartaria thing, which is actually it was it actually a nation on a map next to Russia, correct? I, well, it was like a global thing. Yeah, There's actually, some it say everywhere. it's North America and everything through here. Um, Walter Bosley's got some good stuff. Uh, and it's about the Sonoma Flying Club that existed in California and uh, where they had flying machines. Because there's reports, uh, I remember Clark's Hill next to Lafayette back in sometime in the 1880s 1890s people were seeing like these flying ships people yeah. going over and it's like it wasn't a balloon but it was kind of submarine shape some people shape. say it looked like a fish or yeah, something. yeah yeah stuff yeah. like this and actually supposedly uh royal dance that happened in surreals said they came over and it looked like it was chinese and they threw out like a teacup with a ribbon on it and uh, like a gift out of it and it went into the old whatnot shop and he said then People said like a week later the train stopped there and even back then it was like the wild wild west a man in a black suit got out went in there and then the cup was gone you know came and got that shit 
but there was all and, and there's 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 a book uh, and sorry just real quick for clarification when did this happen this is like the 18 18 uh, 80s okay and around that time Dow okay. over Waco there was a huge site and you can go research this stuff and these accounts and in all the newspapers and stuff, you know, really <laughs> things in the air. And then so we act guys actually, actually, away society? actually the War Department during the Civil War was shown a device that was that was like a thing that could fly around, but it was like way too much money and they didn't have time and didn't need it, they didn't think. Okay. But that was in the 1860s, you know, and then you get in the Tertarian thing and then we see there's easily electric cars, there was Mm -hmm. There's architecture and everything else that's not explained. Even a lot of the stuff in our country, you, we see these massive yeah, but the mud and stuff. And stuff. You know, there's there's well, that happened there at the bottom of the Gold Mine Road. You know. Explain well, that. Okay, so Rod Rogersville, you know how it's cut through like eight feet of clay and then there's pebbles and sand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole entire thing was buried in mud and all the way to my house there's fire pits mm -hmm. that are four feet below the clay. And there's not oh, a single shit. rock all the way down until the layer of the fire pit. And so, and then up the Osteo, there's another fire pit. Same thing. It's like eight feet below the clay layer. And when you go over the train tracks, and you know there's that big mud plateau, mm -hmm. that's how thick the mud settled in that valley. It was like 15 feet right there. It's huge. Um, that's but right. by by Rogersville, it cuts through like a good 10 foot chunk. It turns purple at the bottom, and then turns stony. Mm -hmm. Right, and to judge that by by regular geometry or ge what is it was it? geology? Yeah, well, the standard story it's all erosion off the mountains here and there, and it's filled in. Right, which is impossible because I've lived here for decades, and it's like, dude, the, the mountain would be gone at that rate. No, it's slimes right, talking, everything all the way yeah. to Arizona. Right, because the clay. Yeah, is there was actually. Is this could this potentially be like the younger Dryas? Well, some of it happened then, and, and it, there's been these events. I. It was, uh, God, I read, Massive I read a paper, I'm trying to remember more, it was like about several mega floods, and not only is the flood the water rushing in, but it's also the water rushing out, and it was creating deposits, Okay. and the, the I, I grew up on the Tippy Canoe River in Indiana, but it's called the Tippy Canoe event, which came all the way out here, and out here on Waldo, there's a thin layer of shell of fossils in, and that's where it finally thinned out when it, and there were bigger events named after different rivers back there when we've had more floods and in and out. And then the mud flood happened like maybe as they think, what, recently 1820s or something like that, somewhere in there. Well, okay, this is a map of uh, the Gulf of California. Right. And then there's this river, and there's a lake at the top, right? You right. see the lake? Okay, yeah. So the string of mountains that comes down, and then mm -hmm. this river, you can downward. see right here, it's a... Uh, a small river leading from the lake down. downward to a great, exactly. river. Yeah. Yeah. A great so, river. Sorry. So um, when you look at the actual map, and then you look up, and you look at where Alamosa is, mm -hmm. see how it's got that little elbow on the shoulder? Yeah. And then you go back... And he's just got the little shoulder shape, and the mm -hmm. mountains come down. Mm -hmm. So it shows that Alamosa above Taos was a massive lake, like half the size of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And when that dam broke through, it ripped out the entire Galisteo Gorge. Mm -hmm. Or not the Galisteo, it's the Rio Grande. The whole gorge from Taos was because Alamosa just dumped out. And when that tidal wave came through, it changed the course of the Rio Grande towards Texas. Because mm -hmm. on every map before um in this time period it shows it always going to the gulf of, Calif of uh, california mm -hmm. whoa and so now it veered the, west rather than east mm -hmm. oh it cuts shit. socorro and it even shows socorro on this map and then now so now it goes the other way from socorro and see what blows my mind is we so, don't learn this shit this type of shit in schools right you know because i mean, mean a devastating event like that it seems like you should you just get back to well rebuilding see, everything. see you get a lot of different theories and and some of the Tartarian thing, and they talk about the parasites took over. Okay, so hold on, just for someone you know, who, yeah, like, yeah, like no, me, no, who yeah. has never heard yeah, of the yeah, Tartarian no, theory, what the fuck is yeah, yeah. Tartaria? Okay, yeah, so just, just All right, just... Tartaria shows up on a lot of maps. You can still <laughs> All go them. reference old flags and stuff, and okay. the Global Eagle, and it was basically encompassed most of Asia, parts of China, Japan. Some maps show it all the way into North America. But it, it, you know, up in as recently 1830s, you get old encyclopedias; they're still mentioned. 
you know, I read a, a, a biography on Stalin that talked about when he was in there, how they purposely eradicated any of the history of the Tartars and stuff. But uh, there's theories that they had wireless technology and kind of the Tesla stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And all that got re taken out and, and uh, re -written then reintroduced in different ways. And refounded. Okay. They founded these buildings that and were. So, Tartaria, really just real quick, like, again, just for someone like me who has never heard of this, it was another nation of some other people. The biggest nation. Biggest nation on earth that, 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 that slightly would, encompassed North America and some European or well, Asian. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. the thing is, as I think there were other nations, but they were also at that level of like trading with these yeah. these people. Okay, yeah, yeah. But Tartaria was like a. I think you know, they were the. But it spread like half airships. To have airships, right, yeah, and create right. this global kind of like Silk Road, if you will. You yeah. know, so yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. Okay. And so they, that therefore, like introducing this technology, they were big into toys and like. And then the yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. yeah. were buying all. You know, the then it all ties to Ukraine. Like that thing we found in the ocean. Like, what's this device? It tells time over like that. Like the drop that. Like, 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 yeah, false exactly. Jews of where Ukraine yeah. is and Tartaria and their hatred towards Russia and all this eradication of history and power plays and. So this goes back to to, to, to control our civilization uh, with the infiltration with the Catholic Church, like like what was in the late 1700s. It was basically the uh, Illuminati Westfall, and those guys that led to they went in and arrested the Pope and took all the Vatican's wealth and stuff in the late 1700s. You know, and the Pope really didn't get reestablished. Well, Mussolini made Vatican its own country, and then, but it wasn't by decree until like 1960 that really put the Pope back to where he's at. So, you know, he was taken out for a while and all, all their stuff jacked by... Until you know, they could reconstruct it and put their guy in. Yeah, and it's a, boy, I mean, it's a fascinating thing and it really ties into what's going on in Ukraine, why all the corruption's been there, they were the name stealers, like he didn't travel through area because uh, they just take your identity and then go where you're going and but then people were didn't know who you were or didn't know what you look like you know it wasn't the internet so mm -hmm. I mean they were just it, it, it's a it's fascinating I've been getting into that and, and it just shows the lineage of corruption and the intent and motivation and the motives of, of why things are playing out the way they are now and uh, what do you think really is the, I mean, there is no escaping this. I mean, there is just like a huge power structure, you know, but it's like, I mean, they could just turn the switch off on us and then it's like, well, what do we do? You know, I mean, how, where, how do we apply this knowledge? How do we apply the knowledge? You know, it gets back down to the, our, our biggest weapon is, is not to be fearful. Mm -hmm. They hate that. Then a little ridicule, sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't, well, yeah. again, we, we touched on it in the interview, uh, you know, by resisting, you give it power. Mm -hmm. And when you don't resist, it really fucks with their head. And it's not like you submit, it's just you do your shit, whatever it is, and you're placing time where you're now, this is what's going on. You know, reality is the thing, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so... So it's it's really coming down to me more, you know. There's a lot of talk about prepping, food shortage, supply chain, you know, stock up. That's all very prudent and, and and probably necessary. But the real work is to be able to have yourself mentally prepared for whatever crap comes down there and be able to react in sane, rational way. Right, right. Which to me comes down to your connection with God. You know, are, well, are you, you making yourself solid? You know, so that seems to help. That. Yeah, seems to help. Seems Definitely to helps for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I saw this interesting interview, and I won't reference who it was or whatever. Because we're um, all going to die. That's what God told me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. 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 And yeah. it's one of two ways, you know. Either, you know, either way. What, what was it? Uh, it was just a gentleman talking about him and his wife had a, their daughter had like a bump on her head or whatever. And he was just basically like, as a man, I have to stay strong for my wife or whatever. And he was like, but basically I have to constantly remind my, not only my wife, but myself, that God loves us. And like, you know, God approves of us, mm -hmm. you know, and that helps me. Mm -hmm. And so, not to make this religious segment again. Well, I mean, 
Uh, you know, hey, at, this, at this point, you know, what we're going through and what this An attitude of gratitude. Right. That's well, what, yeah, I think what the Petri yeah. estate is all about. I mean, it's like we're, we're rising to the occasion of a spiritual battle here. You know, no matter what we're talking about, this is really a spiritual battle, you know. And it's like Indeed. we're just putting our energy, yeah. like like evil witches, you know, we're just like doing the ceremony here to, uh, to you know, kind of promote um, goodness, if you will. You know, I mean, geez. I think in the Bible they call it the remnant. <laughs> right, right. You know, I mean... It, I mean, you look, I mean... You know, we haven't talked about sigils, you know, uh, uh, cultural archetypes and things like sigils or, or symbols yeah. that, that you sub, that subconsciously mm. trigger things in your brain. I, 222 was my own sigil that I created and I played around with it and, and found that it worked in a lot of different ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so like, hey, you're going to do it, I'm going to do it too, you know. Mm. And uh, that's been pretty fun. But we're in a place where we're just really here to experience it and to you know when you talk about God and God can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people but ultimately it's only one thing and it's like that you know the, it, it just it's it, to me it's so simple and I try not to make it complicated but I mean, this is it. This is the, This is all real. Everything's real. We're all real. We're all here. We're, right. you know. Uh, and I think uh, it comes. Am I going to be able to understand why or what? You know, I I know things on the physical level and subatomic particles and the ether and yeah. how everything's all created. And it's even more mystifying how it's all electric living. How it's you well, know well, all well, this and that. Know. To well, me, it's just like okay, it's a miracle. You know, what, how else can you describe it? We're living in a constant recreating miracle. Creation goes on all the time. Uh, you take everything that you know and put it together and stand back and look at it, and this, the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts, you know, and that, that points towards a higher thing, you know, to me. And that's, that, but I don't, I don't, I don't like try to act where I have to be accountable to it. You know, there's rooms for mistakes and everything else, and you know, right and wrong, and there's decisions you make, and and. Um, well, I think that I'm learning all the time. I'm 68, and it's still really great. I love exploring it. I'm. I, you you want to get in some things on the Bible that I've come come into. I think it's a YouTube channel called The Fifth Kind. There's a guy named Paul Wallace, and he's also got a guy named Mario Baglino, who is, had been tasked out by the Vatican Press, and he's doing it on his own now, and writing books, but uh, his job was to interpret biblical texts word by word without putting the uh, theological interpretations that they would put over the whole story to make it... So it's more like religious. a realistic... Yeah, it's like yeah. it's just what like yeah. word for word. And you know, here, translated. Here is this dictionary we use for the Hebrew, and we go through the Hebrew, and what this word really means in this, like Elohim is plural. You know, uh, the Glenol is identified like twenty different Elohim in the Old Testament. You know, the word there in the old Hebrew text, there's no talk of immortality or eternal. That was all. Those are misinterpreted words. Old Lamb and whatever is really a place unknown but we it, but the theology at the time made a beautiful story out of and created this whole thing but when you go word by word then you realize well you know sure sounds like some sort of alien contact and uh but it doesn't take things away from christ because christ is like a whole different thing you know? right i mean christ is like this uh, uh higher consciousness Beings, it's attainable to different people at different times, mm -hmm. and and uh, you know they didn't make him son of God until the Council of Trent and I see or whatever they decided that we'll just have because there was a big battle between the original Christian Church, which is totally different than now. The message has been lost. So I go to the New Testament, look at the red letter text, and then I see it's written on like five different levels of okay. understanding. You know. The, the New Testament, but mainly the words of Christ, you know, and and then it, to me it matches up closest to 
a Zen interpretation, you know, and it's, it, you know, when you talk about, you know, uh, in Zen they call it beginner's mind, being childlike, you know, same thing, all these things are, it's all there, it was all, and it's to be expected because it was all knowledge known at that time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, Jesus put it all together, and he was cutting through the bullshit, and they didn't like it, mm-hmm. you know. But he was telling people more of the truth, you know, within the context of his times and other things that were going on. I mean, some of the early Christian rituals really tied back to ISIS and, mm-hmm. and sex cults, and, you know, synagogue, <laughs> yeah. moon worshiping, and all this stuff. You know, I mean, all that was mixed up back then too. But he sort of like sifted through it all and got down to like the very core aspects mm-hmm. of how to best get through life with an understanding that you know we're you know we're here in this life in this time and right now I mean it's like what else is there this is it this is it have you guys grew up in the day where cults were pretty you know it seems like there were more cults going was like cults? Cults. Yeah, cults. Like in the uh, 60s cults. and 70s. You guys ever had like... We raised like, cults. Yeah. No, actually, well, actually, you know, the whole Manson thing was V, you know, and then hippies <laughs> and cults. Oh, shit. And then you had James Jones in 80 or whatever, you know, drink the Kool-Aid and... And, uh, there wasn't like sub. That, that was, was like, all. That was just something the else. Boss thing or something. That's what something else that the Hill control ball. media was. Remember that? Yeah, was was <laughs> starting to, get in the to inject into the narrative because you got to remember <laughs> all that information was already part of a controlled narrative since the end of World War II. Okay. I mean, yeah, all well, your major executives, like, there. like the, the head yeah. of CBS was like CIA yeah. back in the 50s. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. Here's, yeah. What yeah. Yeah. here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. It started there. Because there was that a lot of that, but there was I'm also a lot of Don't be scared. It's way too sweet. That would give me a hangover at the wazoo. What? Don't gulp it. <laughs> well, I didn't gulp it. You just gulp it. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'll, I'll take some more. Thank you, Mike. I will gladly. Right. It's an honor. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you can say that now. Yeah. You can say oh, that now. Oh, okay, so anyway, you were... Yeah, again, not cult. A cult. Yeah, but anyway... Uh, Even the or, Eastern influence. No, no, I mean, we, we had like the early gods. I, you know, Black Sabbath came out, and that was like the first, like... And Alice Cooper biting heads off a of chicken. So started to see a rock and roll go towards the dark side, you know, and the heavy metal and all that. But you were at Woodstock? No. No. Rock Wait, hold on. Me. What about the story about y'all throwing grapes at chicks saying, show me your tits? Wasn't that, that was, at Woodstock? Yeah, no, that was, that was, uh, in, that that was in Indiana, Indianapolis 500. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Same thing. It was it Woodstock. Was Woodstock it, was, it was Woodstock Great Ham. Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, show me your tits. Stop car races at Rinch Lear. Okay. Try to do that anywhere, everywhere. No, I think you're talking about uh, Watkins Glen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was probably probably my both of our biggest concerts, I would say. People What's it called? Wise, what is it called? It was, it was a Grateful Dead the band and uh, Almond Brothers. Almond Brothers. One day concert. The band the last and last Almond three Brothers. Days. The band, Grateful Dead the band, band and, and Almond Brothers. Brothers. Right. And each one of them pretty much took a day. Really? No, it was a one day. The music was one day, but the the party was like for three days. The party was like. (laughs) Well, yeah, it it just it got way bigger than what they expected, and it was just. I mean, it was a city of tents and freakness and. Six hundred thousand. You know, thunderstorms. People? And, yeah. mm-hmm. Did you actually see the performance? Or no? Dude, that's oh, Albuquerque, yeah, yeah, bro. Bit, and yeah, uh, and which was your favorite? Yeah. It was por- Who was your favorite? It was pouring down rain, and uh, Eddie and I jumped in this tent. They said, "Come oh, on yeah. in." And it was like all these guys from West Virginia, a couple of chicks, and they're all in sitting in there, stark naked, and everything. <laughs> so I missed that. I was out chasing this chick in New York. Oh, I'm a busy man. <laughs> Dude, he's famous. Ignore that. Well, no, tell us about it. Tell okay. us about it, pops. What? What's the the fucking lady you're chasing oh, down in New York? What's her Is name? She fine? Well, we were. Yeah. Most torpedo of the tits. Like, what, were we, what drug? Was it angel dust? Fuck you guys. It was just traveling. 
Anyway, <laughs> I'm fucked up. Yeah, are we still talking about this man? I don't remember that much. I remember the right <laughs> I think it was Angel Dust. Yeah, what was going around it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. We, we got busted coming out of there. Oh, yeah. With what? With what? <laughs> uh, I, I, that, that's a, a story that everybody I know has already heard. So. No, we don't. We, no, we, you, we, you don't know us. We haven't heard you it. Alright, tell it. Yeah, yeah, no. you don't know. Alright. I'm not even going to add it. Fuck the video. Oh, here's, I want to tell us. Fuck the video. I want to hear it. Here's the story. Okay. Hold on, tell us what you were high on at the concert. Uh, Angel we, we, we got I, got I got to start with this. There's an old F-150 van that Eddie had. We just been busted in Monticello. We road trip, Mike and Susie, his girlfriend. And, and the van had no water pump in it, so it was one uh, old Ford you open up between the seats and just keep pouring water in as you're going, you know. So we take off to New York. Uh, we get stopped going through this little town and they let us go. They just like pulled us over. Told oh, us to turn around though. Yeah, yeah, and, and we did. And then like <laughs> three nights later we come back and it's like one midnight or something. And we After get, the concert. After the concert and we get pulled over and they search it. And then we actually had picked up a hitchhiker who left a jacket hanging and there was like a, trash a, weed. like a bag of trash weed. We would have no, thrown it out or smoked it. If we'd have known it was a Wait, tell them tell them about Eddie you're driving. I'm sitting in the passenger seat, right? Eddie's got a corn cob pipe. He is fucking blasting That's that right. bitch. I mean we got a fucking <laughs> smoke from the glass. And these policemen pull up the wrong side and he's like <laughs> <laughs> And that was a start. Was yeah, yeah. And so he had a quarter, was in the back. He had a quarter ounce of hash. That was like really all they they found the pot. They had us out of the van and Mike had the hash in one hand and it, Jack and they go, let me see your hands. So he like took his jacket this way with the hash in it and said, Let me see both hands. And the water pump was pouring water out. Yeah. And I jumped down and go in the cockpit. <laughs> and so he's stuck it under his belt buckle and then they turn around and he's standing there like that, you know. And, and, <laughs> that, yeah, that's why. And, and so they they, they they arrest us, take us away. They put us in the car. Yeah, and you threw it under the cop car as you and, got in. And Susie, my girlfriend, was like shaking yeah. and shit and I said, Can can I get her a blanket? So they go, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grabbed this fucking army blanket. I threw it around her, and now, I mean, I can do anything yeah. with the hash I want to. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, I'm putting her in the cop car, and helping her in the cop car, and I'm just underneath the cop car, man. So, they, yeah. haul, they haul us off to the state police place, and they fingerprint us and shit. And figure, well, okay, and then they're going to lock us up. You know? No, they take us <laughs> to the Justice of the Peace house. Three o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, literally. Just and, and there's freaks watch. coming out, so they're stopping all the freaks. And, and so, we go in, and we've got an office in the garage. The, the Justice of the Peace is sitting there with a wife beater t shirt. Damn, he's on no, and with, uh, Yeah, with a wife beater t shirt, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And, and, and uh, <laughs> there's four of us, and Mike says, Well, I'm on federal probation. Susie doesn't have a record, and, and Eddie and I didn't tell him. We'd just been arrested, Eddie, for <laughs> felony. <laughs> and I just but what state that. is this in the back? New York State. New York State. Yes. And, and, and so he's charging us, he said, you're all charged possession of marijuana. How do you plead? I said, well, what's the fine? How much is the fine? He said, well, I can't tell you how much the fine is. And I said, so if I plead not guilty, I go to jail. And I gotta get a lawyer, whatever, and go to court and all that. That's right. And I said, and if I plead guilty and I don't have enough money to pay the fine, and I go to jail and, you know, that's right. I said, how do you plead? And I said, well, I plead insanity because I'd be crazy to plead any other fucking way. <laughs> it just like froze his brain and he's got the pen in his hand. <laughs> and he throws it down on the desk and walks out. And a few months later, he comes back and goes, How much money y'all got? <laughs> wow, <laughs> we empty out our pockets, yeah, yeah. $61 and change. You and you, $30, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you dismiss charges and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. How, long was your point, yeah. how long was both of your hairs at that point? I like this. Mine was like this. <laughs> yeah. Never got any longer. Mine, mine was wasn't really cut. Good. Where was that? That's where it was at. No, actually, it, and this I was what year? In, in what city? Quite the whole time. 1973. At that time. In what city? This is Jane. No, it's. 
I don't remember. It's it's Mayville or something. I don't know. It's wherever St. Bonaventure University is. How far are you guys trying to be there? Oh, where we got busted? Yeah. Oh. I don't know, but it was the same place. It was pretty when the true. police Some stopped us going same. to Watkins Glen yeah. and told us to turn around, it was the same town. Yeah. When we came same back. cops. Busted same, same cops. cops. Yeah. Motherfuckers. Okay, Mother so how did we get home from that? All right, so then, so then they tell us where the county line is. Well, first they, they turn us Oh, loose. yeah, they turn us loose back to the van so we recover the hash. The hash is laying right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, we're, 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 they right. towed the truck so it's not overheated. No, the truck's just sitting there. They yeah. didn't do anything. Oh, it's in on the center. Yeah, it just, it was wherever they pulled us over. Oh, Gas okay. station. Yeah, and, and then we, we made it out of the county and there was a rest park. And the first thing I did was take the hash and go out in the dark, take a leak and hide the hash. And by the time I got back, there was already other cops there going through the van. They found a shotgun shell while we got there. I wonder if like, here, they just got all our money, man. Here's the yeah. fucking ticket. Yeah. You know, Here's my receipt. So they, they okay. And uh, they left. And then we found a, uh, there was a, there was, for mowing the grass, the highway department, there was like a tall 10 gallon. And the guy was mowing can. the grass at the time. Yeah. Right? But he had this big gas can, antique. Yeah. Badass. Yeah, it looked like a one of the milk things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we yeah. grabbed that and split we'll and got down the road and <laughs> put no gas wait, in. And waited until the tractor driver was all the way down to the end of this thing. <laughs> you stole his gas can. Yeah. I didn't know how heavy it was. Yeah. It was pretty heavy. Yeah. No <laughs> gas can. And we yeah. run back, run back to the fucking van, take off, and then we stop and put it in the van. Wanted to right. keep the can, but we thought we better not. So, yeah, I think we did back into what yeah. Cody was saying. Damn it, I thought we kept that book. I don't think so. <laughs> we should have. Yeah, yeah, no. That fuck yeah. would be worth $3,000. Yeah, yeah. 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 Literally. Yeah. More than the van was worth then. Exactly. Uh, so then we uh, had enough gas. We got to Ohio. And we flagged some freaks down on the turnpike. We and sold some, some hash. Oh, yeah. So the hash. Rash. Got home. Where you guys hiding all the hash? In the truck. Where you hiding all the hash? Once we're in oh, oh my fucking continuously on the move. <laughs> <laughs> Just behind the bush. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so So how many times did you guys put it in your ass? <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. I'm kidding, you don't we, we put it in Sue's ass. What so, oh my god. god. <laughs> yeah, so that is not to butt shit. Okay. <laughs> but shit. Leading back into what Cody was saying. So it's, that's the story. I'm never going to yes. tell it again. Oh, yes. it's, it's, it's on film. No, it's on All right, now it's no, on it wasn't film. recording, actually. No, it is. Yes. Say it again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tell the one about Mexico, though. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Got me in a corner. No, it, it might as well. I mean, I. I All right, let's it, hear it, dude. Let's hear this fucking. First car I ever had, I won in a poker game. 66 Buick Skylark, no exhaust, no brakes, no floor. And no floorboard. <laughs> and uh, we traded it in Delphi at the junkyard for a 61 International Travel. It didn't run. That didn't run. Got it home. Mike did his magic on it. We took the hood off and then pulled it down the gravel road so that he could set the timing and all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting on the fender. And, and we had these, and, and we had these long horse steer horns on top of yeah. the windshield. And, nice. and if the travels were like pre-suburbans, they had a back seat and yeah. curved back windows and doors. So, and fucking beautiful. Yeah. And, and you know, toggle switch for the brake lights and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Three speed. <laughs> Three on the tree, wasn't it? Yes, it yeah. was. And well, we yeah. Say it. it was. And, and so we got it running, and, <laughs> yes, and, 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 yes. and we're, we got it running. And they said we need to take it for a trust, test drive. And he said, well, we can take it anywhere except where there's mountains. I said, well, hell, we can go all the way to Mexico without any mountains. Sounds good to me. Yeah, so, so we did. And where were where were you guys at this time? Indiana. We were in Indiana, and we drove to Mexico. Yeah. Well, I reserved the motor. Wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Not, no, no, no. We're not going to continue for it. I just want a little bit of clarification. How long did that take? That did that take? Which cars? 
driving from Indiana to the Mexico border. Well, it's 24, 27, 8, 9, yeah. hours, 30 Y'all are crazy, dude. Yeah, but We're yeah, going to yeah. test out a car and we drive have, it for 30 fucking no, hours. We, we bought it out of a junkyard. <laughs> That's what I'm running. saying. Yeah, we just I rebuilt got it, right. it underneath a shade tree in the backyard of the house we were living at. I, because it was winter time, I put a piece of cardboard in front of the radiator to make the heater work. No, that was the, that was later. We got it in the summer because we went down in July. We did, but the oh, piece no, of fucking cardboard no, was it, still it, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was yeah, my point. Yeah. <laughs> Is we get down to Mexico, dude, right? And we're cruising around. I'm like, man, a little warm. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, we had all of our shit oh, yeah. bundled in burlap on top of like a top giant of doobie. In burlap? Oh, oh, yeah, man. It, yeah. it was... Well, I mean, we fit right come back, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was... And when we... And we're like, then when we come back, back to Mexico, a lot of shit yeah. happened in Mexico that we could talk about. Yeah. But when we came back from Mexico, because Bob's flip-flop blew out. No, yeah, yeah, that's and right. So he had an alligator <laughs> clip. That he stuck things through the flip flop and hooked the out the clip on so he could wear his flip flop. These motherfuckers coming across the border. Bob didn't have his shoes on. <laughs> One's laying upside down. They see that fucker and they fucking tear us. That's up. a real shit. Because you have yeah, shoes. shoes. All our shit unloaded on the fucking highway. Oh my god. It was fucking. Because you weren't wearing a shoe? No, because, because the flip flop was a roach clip and they could see the alligator. Which it was, but. Oh, but I see what you're saying. Because yeah. they thought there was weed. Yeah, they were hiding weed. It was probable cause. I think just looking at us was probable well, that cause. Was right. but they're 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 yeah, they, they, they only took the shit off the top and saw that you know, we're a bunch of. Hillbilly, yeah, yeah. Fucks, Testing know, out our RV on you know, the fucking 60 like, hour drive. Put this shit back <laughs> on the <laughs> like they made us put it. Oh back. yeah, we had to wrap it all back. Right? Well, it's like uh, it's like uh, uh, Elias's dad Frank. Remember, he's like the fucking cops just cut his car to shit that one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thought he had weed in his car. Mm -hmm. that, was that was crazy. He took that van apart. Didn't find the coke yeah. guy stuff down on the. There's that little broken seat frame over the engine thing. Yeah. And took that, took the straw down there and stuffed that down in there. They're not really good, man. I hide drugs in their cars all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and they pick me up and I'm having like... Yeah, yeah. Well, back then cops were stupid, though. Like, no, 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 they're not stupid. They're just no. busy. Mm -hmm. They got too much. I mean, yeah. really, how would you like to try to figure out all us motherfuckers that you pick up? Every single one, dude. Yeah, hundreds. Yeah, it, it's it's just, always, I mean, we're all trying to get over. You you just got to be like, okay, fuck it. If he ain't killing me, I'm good. You got to you got <laughs> you got to present yourself like it's not worth their time. Right. Exactly. You know, that's, that's that's a little thing. Fish, At this point, it's really not worth my time. And and uh, they just want to go home. Give me a story. No, we have a story that they're, they're just looking for a story. Most cops are looking for a story where they can say, okay, yeah, it's a warning ticket or whatever, you know. They're, they're really, you know, whether they believe it or not, they don't care, you know. They're, Most of them go with that. For glory. They, yeah, they can write it in their report and it's all gone. You know, what do you think? No what do you guys glory. think about the guy that should, did you guys see the video of the cop that shot that dude at what, how many yards? Oh, I think that, what that, the guy in the middle of the street? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where, where he pulled The guy out. rolled up drinking coffee. Oh my god. You guys see this video? Oh man. So I this, just want to pull it up. So this cop, yeah, he rolls up. I think it was a uh, hundred yards. Hundred and eighty or something yards. Almost two hundred yards. Look at the AR-15. He's rolling oh, up. The AR. And he's, and he's cruising, you know, 60 miles an hour through the residential, you know, through the city area, you know, running the reds or whatever he has to do. Fast, Getting there, he's drinking coffee with one hand, right? He this fucking pulls up, pulls his brakes, sits his coffee down, comes around, yeah, this is a cop. He comes around, pops the fucking trunk, gets out his AR, ch ch oh, yeah, checks it out, fucking uses, using his truck as fucking cover, I'm pretty sure, is just pokes out, sees the perp. I mean, what is the perp doing? No, he's like on. He's been shooting at the cops the yeah, whole fucking time. Oh, yeah. So this guy rolls so up. So the, the cop oh, rolls up and you hear bullets yeah. hitting his car. Dude, boop, within boop, boop. seconds on scene. Within seconds of you know, checking his chamber and being like, rocking on. 
Dude, Red Dot just... They're in now. One, One shot. single shot. Boom! Drops him. And then he just puts the gun away. Done. Just well, professional. Man. Yeah, professional. Back to ten, you know. Gun fight? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> the worst person in a gunfight is a motherfucker that ain't shooting yet. He's making sure he's got you fucking dead in that shit. I mean, right <laughs> where he wants your fucking ass while shit's flying past him. Yeah. That's the motherfucker. Not, <laughs> that is the motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. guns, it's like, nah, it's a problem. they got the guns. Yeah, it's you, a problem. you just like give up, go to jail, yeah. hire an attorney. Yeah, I'm an attorney. Yeah, it is fucked up, man. And uh, I mean, not, I'm not saying you need a Waco kind of scenario, but um, well, what I will say about that. Well, what I will say about that is that I think you know I had because me and my parents, funnily enough, like me and my mom are very similar uh, politically. We think very uh, similarly politically. But me and my dad and me and my stepmom. Rebel? Hmm? I didn't know your mom was a rebel. Oh, she's pretty. She's pretty fucking. Yeah, she's she's on our side. She's yeah, fucking. She's bad. all about health and wellness. And you know, both my and I don't want to discredit my dad and my well, stepmom, right, obviously, right. but you know, because uh, they might. End up well, your dad's kind of. Kind of like Bob, leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my dad's mentality. And I'm, I'm saying now, I don't think my dad's. I wish you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think my dad doesn't really see how crazy it's getting these days. You know, he doesn't watch you don't think so? you don't think He doesn't see anything? the videos that we see. Well, that's you know? good. That, in a way, that's. Uh, Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, and it, that's ignore ants. Bliss is you know, yeah. Ignore ants. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, those are the most important people black. because, you know, <laughs> you keep a solid mentality. You're not getting like thrown as an extremist, but then when it's on your doorstep, you react in a severe way because it's like, whoa, what the hell? Well, you know, the shock I, is real. And, and they already got they they already got it rocking and rolling. You know, I mean, everything oh, they yeah, should yeah. be doing, they're already they're already doing it for the right reason. Yeah. No, exactly. Not the wrong reason. You don't need and funnily enough, they don't think like us, but yet again, they do. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really yeah. interesting. Just like those choppers <laughs> coming over last night. Now check this out. They came over, the first one came over, I'm like, huh. Second one come over, I'm out on the porch, going, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Third one come over, I'm like, in the house, locking and loaded. And <laughs> like, okay, no way, man, let me explain this. What am I locking and loading against? I don't know, what a helicopter with a fucking M16, I don't know. Like, what? But you bring in the best you can. What, whatever exactly. you have, you, you know. Come with what you have. What you got. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but that's the thing. In in this whole society we got going on here, it's like you come with the best you got. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just like Trump, you know, uh, fucking Hunter's laptop, blah, 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 blah. You know, all these They got a new things. nickname for, for Joe and uh, Hunter. It's Sniff and Snort. Maybe it's more. I like it, man. That, that is good. Looks like Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. No, that is really good. That's a cartoon right there in yeah. itself. <laughs> you know what, well, guys? Come on, man. You gotta get into animation now. We've already talked about it. You gotta do it. We've already talked. Yeah. It, it, you know, we would have to help. We can baby them for sure. Because what you can get away with in cartoon land, comedy land, very true. Is five times what you can get. Well, uh, dude, you're like the new age. You're the new age Walt Disney. An yeah, interesting not. aside on that. That that you has, play our Mickey Mouse. Yeah, you you talk about no uh, Mickey Mouse to be cartoons and stuff. Uh, there's a whole uh, cartoon channel that's all there was that comics. Good things, you know. Yeah, like the Daily yeah. Wire. They're starting. They put how much uh, on And you look at what Cash Patel did with his children's books that became number one bestseller. Yeah, about that wall. Yeah, fight against the king and the, the new ones about, you know. Well, I love that shit, and we really wanted to get into and that. that. And I They used to They're call it the CIA, thing. the Catholic Intelligence Agency. <laughs> <laughs> Truman, Truman was like trying to kill the CIA too because it, it just was getting out of control. Okay, let me. Uh, it didn't take long. No. Was I mean, Truman a good president? Let me ask you that. That's kind of a random question, but was it? 
you guys were, I know you guys were probably both, you were pretty young because that was Vietnam, right? That was Korea. Truman, I was born at the beginning of Eisenhower. I don't remember Truman, but I yeah. do. Oh, Truman's I, right after I remember World War II. FDR, Eisenhower. FDR died. I do remember Truman. Eisenhower, was he good? Sorry, I mix up Truman and Eisenhower all the time. Eisenhower, Eisenhower came Eisenhower. in in 52. Because he was Vietnam and Korea, like the end of Korea and Vietnam. Well, Truman finished, the, I mean, Eisenhower kind of finished up. Yeah, the Korean the War. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he did Vietnam as well, right? I said, no, 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 no. No, Kennedy was starting to send people over there in '60, and he was taken out in '63. Covertly. Then, Covertly. Then, yeah. Then Johnson escalated. Lyndon. And then Nixon escalated. Well, Kennedy was getting ready to pull him out. Well, they say, but I, no, you know, no, the, I don't. Yeah. The papers are there, man. Hold yeah. on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. That, did well, your yeah. parents? Did your parents speak? Politic, uh, openly, politically. My parents, my, my grandfather did. <laughs> Your my grandfather, my grandfather did. Yeah. But but he served in World War Two. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, where? Uh, Europe or? Uh, he was Asia? actually he actually served in the Marines in the thirties and went to China and uh, saw some shit. Ten pebbles. And uh, then he was like twenty seven in World War Two. Fuck, that's my age, yeah, man. He was an old man going in. Well, you know, so he was in the Seabees. He actually... What uh, did, uh, did he see combat? Sorry, just real quick. Getting more yeah, more eventually, and late, late taped off in the Philippines, and then uh, he was on a, on a ship where they were getting the kamikaze attacks and stuff. He tripped over a big gun barrel that was on the deck and broke his leg during a kamikaze attack. Uh, yeah, so he was in the Philippines, New Guinea. Uh, he was a, a postmaster, and that's what he was after the war. But he worked in, at the post office in Monticello, and uh, he was at the when MacArthur waited back to the you know when Waiting MacArthur in. left, and he said, "I shall return." And he come back. And Where did he come back at? Uh, late, late take off. Late take off, right? And uh, he waited ashore. He'd go change his pants, and they do it again, and get the different film ops and all this shit. With his fucking pipe. Yeah, and MacArthur was a prima donna, but yeah, he was. you know, uh, in a way, he but, was, I mean, we he, need, he was a good general. We needed that probably in a certain way. I mean, the one thing that that that, that was Real interesting about fun. MacArthur it was like he was a commanding officer of Japan in the occupation. And he had this real high regard for Japanese culture and the Japanese people. They let sure. him keep their emperor and all this other stuff. And you know, they rapidly became an ally and stuff instead of going in there. And with the, the because there's you know, it was a yellow pair peril. There was a lot of racism back then. The squinty eyes. At the beginning of the war, they didn't think they could shoot down our planes because they had squinty eyes and they couldn't, they couldn't see. see right. I mean, that literally Damn, was like okay. the, the dialogue back then. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, that's pretty yeah, I'm not, yeah, it's not like we're making that up. That's, like, that's yeah. just weak, dude. I'm not, I'm not even saying hey, it's I'm just saying, have there sure been studies? Right. Right. There's right. right. some right. just cartoons. Yeah. The cartoons in that yeah. era. They yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Think, 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 think. So there's your propaganda machine. There's your social conditioning. So speaking of the social conditioning and the propaganda, him and shit, you know, he's out there like, ah, uh, Mike, so speaking of social conditioning and propaganda, were you accepted? Well, because I know Vietnam. Never. Never. Never been accepted anywhere. <laughs> no, <laughs> <look of mine. laughs> no, yeah, no, but as a, as a Vietnam veteran, when you got back, because I know that was like, you know, as being someone who grew up in the fucking 90s and early 2000s, I only hear shit. And I hear a lot about how Vietnamese, or uh, Vietnamese. Vietnam veterans weren't really accepted when they got back. Is that something that you would experience? I, know, I accepted them all. Hold on. Well, I, I tell the story. Tell we the story you for about the American flag out in front of your headshot. <laughs> oh well, you owned the first headshot. Wait, well, hold on, hold on. Before we proceed into that, yeah. did yeah, you I, get accepted? I will tell you that. This is, this but is, first, this I will answer Reese's question. Okay, yeah. I got my brains fucked up. <laughs> Literally, I when I came back. I was in a cast up to my hip from being wounded. So all I experienced is a whole bunch of girls wanting to fuck my brains out. <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good to hear. Something about being a wounded soldier. Yeah. It was okay. like crazy, man. And you played that for a long time. I did. As long as I <laughs> as long as they tried to take my cast off the You'd be wearing it. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> 
No, but it, it really, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just me. It was almost uh, every wounded vet that came back. It's like, man, you couldn't sit down in a chair. Some chick on top of you. Oh, I mean, shit, you've been a fucking, you've been a few so years without changed. pussy. Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Well, shit, I saw this movie a while back, and it had Adam Beach in it. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a Native American actor, but it was a. Uh, there was a scene where they were on Times Square, and there's a uh, Vietnam uh, Vietnam veterans coming back, and like everyone's getting like egged and like all this shit. So yeah. that's kind of the stigma that I've seen or heard about. So yeah, that happened in places, but again, you know, like yeah. You know, hold hold the, on, hold on. Before yeah. we go any further, tell the story about Dude. the American flag out in front of your head show. Okay. First of all, to Bob's point, mm. you got shit, right? pretty much every place you went, but it was pretty much equalized out by not getting shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't really, you know, like, what the fuck, man? I walked <laughs> down to the middle of D.C. in the black neighborhood, man. What do you think I'm, what do you think they're gonna say to me? Yeah, it's out here honking. I mean, so, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Right. You call me a baby killer, ain't no different than call me anything. I mean, you know, you're in the wrong place. Move on. <laughs> Keep moving. Yeah, yeah. You. You'll find a chick who'll fuck your brains out, kind of thing. Quickly. Quickly. No, but um. Next question I'm was, sorry, I wanted to bring you a lighter note. The, the, but um, the early seventies mm -hmm. were, dude. You. Because when you got back, let's clarify. You, you, you got guys, back in seventy one. You guys could not have an erotic dream that we covered those years. Is this, really is this true, true, Bob? Is this uh, true? Bob and I could say you just walked out the show with the origins. That you guys would be going like, no fucking way. No wow. fucking way. I, 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 had, I, I You know, we are talking about White County being so redneck, you know, Wally. Sounds like our Satanist yeah, question got <laughs> answered. My best friend at the time, Wally Cox, had a natural afro. He let his hair grow out and it, it was just fucking afro. Black guy or white guy? A white guy. Okay. And so one, was... day, one day, just for fun, <laughs> Sorry. he put blackface on. I know this is inappropriate now, and back then, but it was white county, you know. Yeah, there yeah. aren't any black people. They last black guy there. Yeah, it's they, almost a revolt, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's standing against yeah, the community. And I watched him walk around downtown and shit and catching people's reactions and shit. Yeah, it was just <laughs> fucking funny. I mean, that's the kind of shit we do. <laughs> that gorilla theater, we were, you know, already like, I, I, you know, I wrote an editorial when I was like in high school. But we could do it. The cops were calling up and giving me death threats, you know. And shit, you know, just oh, against the cops, you know. But it was the guy at the newspaper thing, she said, oh, this is really good. I'm going to print this. And she did. And I was like getting these anonymous phone calls. You don't quit pushing drugs. You started to quit that Pushing up daisies and shit. Like, <laughs> and then I had one cop said, you know, I don't know what you did, but you, Really ought to get out of White County. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got it. I, 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 Is like, it weird that it's mind. called White County? <laughs> Super, yeah, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Indiana White County. Yeah. Yeah. White, White County, County Indiana, yeah. basically. Yeah. Were you about to say the pubs there? Well, the show back to the flag. Yeah. Okay, so open up a head shop. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Zigzag. Mr. Zigzag. Which is a sick name. And I had a, what was called a peace flag which was an American flag, but instead of the stripes, I mean the stars in the blue background, it was a peace emblem. So I had a sign post out in front of my business, arm out like this, so I hung the motherfucker there, right along with the Mr. Zigzag mm -hmm. flag. Mm -hmm. So it was Mr. And this Zigzag is after the war, right? Is that Man, this I got these seven. fucking people Call me up on the fucking phone, threatening me, <clears throat> telling me they're going to call the VFW on my ass. Who's that? Yeah, who Better is that? Better than foreign wars. Foreign wars. It's just yeah. a fucking club of buck where you go get fucking yeah. Alki yeah. veterans. You know? okay. And and basically you, this was to like come fuck, well, like, uh, fuck you. No, actually, well, actually there was a big anti-hippie thing going yeah. on. That's what yeah. ran us out of town. Yeah, exactly. Like, we were the hippies. We were the... Yeah. Yeah, we're smoking and, pot and doing all this shit. And, and we were getting all the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, you know, okay, I, that, 
And where was this? Wait, Sorry, real quick. Where Monticello, was this? Indiana, in White County, north, north central, yeah. northwest central Indiana. Okay, okay. About a hundred miles south of Chicago. A <clears throat> hundred miles south of Chicago. Yeah, and miles the police hated this because check this out, man. The police were like maybe five years older than yeah. our crew, right? Uh -huh. And they were hitting on all the hot chicks in town, right? He couldn't get nowhere. Us fucking hit well, And there were vigilantes. Fucking everything they were still vigilantes. They hated us. They hated us. Who the hell is telling you? But that's how you guys met. Is, is you open a head shop and buy well, I don't know. Is I don't know. Common yeah. friends. Like I, I, yeah. I was trying to remember. I think the first time was when you had the. The, the bong salesman over to your apartment on oh, down yeah. by Blue Water yeah, Beach. Bong Blue Water. salesman? Yeah, yeah. What are these guys like? Yeah. I've met a cigarette salesman. Yeah, yeah. 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 salesman. I had this, I had this uh, <laughs> paraphernalia salesman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every, of all kinds. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like a sex toy but, salesman. So, anyway, yeah, he's <laughs> in this white <laughs> man, he's he traveling around, you know, selling to head jobs. Was he a fucking weirdo? How old was this guy? Was he older than you guys? No. Not much. Not much. Okay. So he's like trying to get as fucked up as he can every place he goes, no right? Shit. That was his gig. The smoke so, all the strange. He comes into Indiana and he decides to try out some Jensen weed. <laughs> so they go out and they start collecting Jensen weed and it's you don't need much. Which is the Jamestown, it's, it's, right? You know, it's like the much. devil's trumpet. So it's got yeah. Jamestown weed. Right, so you knock the seeds out of it and shit. Oh, oh it's fucking deadly. Uh, and he uh, puts his shit uh, in a pipe and he's yeah, smoking. Deadly nightshade. And I'm smoking yeah. it with him, right? You're smoking deadly nightshade. And right we now. get all fucked up, right? I didn't smoke any. And the next day, <laughs> I'm blind. I mean, blind. I cannot see nothing, man. Oh, I mean, it's like black. That's cool. For 24 hours after that. Were your eyes open? Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. This is the plant that's growing in my yard. You like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you're but, smoking seed, oh, right? Yeah. And he had to stay a night over, you know, what he was supposed to do. To stay, regain his vision, yeah. To regain his vision. But we lived for 24 Both hours straight. Pretty Both what was the high like? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, was really, I really don't know. <laughs> yes. but I don't even know if you got high. I don't know what. Who gives some more? If you're me blind, I don't want to get that high. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it now, again. I would lie. <laughs> no, but this guy was a nutcase, man. I'm telling you, he fucking nothing would stop it. He... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you smoked it. You smoked it. You went blind. Oh, and then you came good, to. Dude. You came to. Well, I wasn't the only one. He, he, he was. Uh, the only one. He, he was. You were a little bit more experimental than I was. So what? Well, you guys went blind. Ate the mushrooms. Well, that's a little experimental. Huh? Yeah, it was experimental. Yeah, I, I ate some mushrooms in Texas. Down there with Gary Hanna. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you picked. You picked these mushrooms. Went well, yeah, you almost died, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, I went yeah, blind yeah, 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 Classic yeah, fucking band and tail. A growing of age story. We hear about these mushrooms and get you all fucked up. Right? So we go down to Texas and they say they grow in cow shit. <laughs> God uh, damn it. So we go down to Texas. We're down there fucking around. And uh, it rains one morning, lightly. And so we decided we're going out into the fucking. There were these big ranches there outside of Rockport to grew cattle and shit. So we're just gonna go out on these ranches, walk around, see what we can find. And sure enough, sure, sure shit. enough, we found us some mushrooms. <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly call them mushrooms. <laughs> Toadstools, I think is another name. Toadstools. So we go back Fungus. to my crib and we we have this one Storm. big white cat. Oh. About this tall man. They shirt. don't get that big. They, first Not suicide. No. <laughs> but those two do. Yeah. So we split this motherfucker right down the middle and we're chawing on it going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we get it down. 
stuff feeling really strange. It's really strange. It's like, well, all right. It's a good sign. Yeah. 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 We're getting off now. <laughs> And we wait a little longer. Now we're being too more strange. <laughs> In a bad oh, way. We're getting all good now. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we start shitting and puking at the same time. Fucking pissing, puking, and shitting at the same time. Just evacuate. <laughs> Not a good thing. Got a system. We're <laughs> going like. We're bleeding out your eyes. I think right? we're poisoned. <laughs> oh my god. That's so so somehow we got a hold of Joe. Yeah. Which was he saved my ass so many times. <laughs> got a hold of Joe. Go. He came down, fucking took us to the This is your step. This is your step down. For uh, for uh, whatever they call it. Had your stomach found. <laughs> no. Hold on. You didn't need that. That's the yeah. step down. But so. anyway, we're we're out in the waiting room and this dude comes in, man. I don't know what's wrong with him, I forget, but he thought he needed to go to the bathroom and he started opening that door and we're like, don't fucking even think about it! Because we're like, yeah, running in and out. Oh man, I mean, just, and we had no time. When it hit you, it, it was like, yeah. oh, dude, this yeah. is gone, you know? <laughs> Throw it. <laughs> what was the highlight? Uh, <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> It was so good, I thought I'd shit myself to <laughs> death. God damn! It was all a dream. It was all a fucking hard trip you thought that was going on. Oh my god! It was yeah. I'm sure it's a bonding uh, I never made that mistake again. <laughs> and I picked a lot of cell inside and since then. <laughs> no toes. Thank you very much. No toes. Oh my god. <laughs> you alright? <laughs> Here, that was. That was Here, you need. <laughs> that was the funniest shit I've heard in a long time. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I know. Oh. Yeah, I mean, hey. We'll be back to that. We'll be back to that. Anyway, war god. stories. War against drugs, war against poverty, war against terrorism, war against this, war against that. War against shit. Hey, they're giving us an 8.9% Social Security increase in January. Woo woo, boy, oh, thank What's you, that? Joe. $30? Uh, I don't know, it depends how much you get. You Maybe 30, how much? Uh, Eight point yeah, nine? largest ever. Nine. We'll just yeah, print. Uh, we'll just print some more fucking. That sounds like some Trump. Trump. Yeah, it sounds like Trump. Trump would say. It's the biggest ever. It's the biggest ever. Have you guys seen that Trump? Have you guys seen that Trump tweet? This says like, hooker. It's like, sorry, losers. Yeah. I have the highest IQ, and you know it. You're yeah. fucking yeah. stupid. You know it. Yeah. God, I fucking miss Trump, dude. Yeah, he's getting. That shit was so fucking funny. Trump is, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. That's the kind of person we need. It's like, I, I. Did you see the kid that was that I posted that was talking like Trump? No, I've seen. Oh it man, I've seen it he's before. He's so fucking he really good. <laughs> that kid just knocks it out of the park, and he's making fun of Trump. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't take anything away from Trump. Yeah. It's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy, deplorable, 45. Who you know has his path this way? He, yeah, looks like somebody that lives in Madrid, but he's got Trump down to a fucking T. Yeah, and just ad lib and do my favorite. Uh, actually, deals. Trump was on a radio show and they yeah. said, "Well, we got another guest here," and then deplorable, deplorable forty five goes in. Trump like they, it. Then they asked Trump, "said What do you think of it?" Because that's that's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> the best. I'm like, hey, maybe he's the best. He's the best. He's the highest IQ. Well, we yeah. Sorry, yeah. losers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you know, uh, you, uh, do you guys know Shane Gillis? Have you guys seen this well, guy? The comedian, or, or the guy who does uh, Adam Schiff, he used to be on fucking oh, Falks. Yeah, that I'm dude is hilarious, bro. Yeah. Perfect Adam Schiff, yeah, which is already watermelon pretty. Watermelon head. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Schiff, <sighs> man, they, they, that is a fucking hemp rope in the making. I'm Standard making. Hotel, just throw that out there. Someday Standard you'll Hotel. Sometime you'll hear about that. Yeah. Eventually, we get to it. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, man, if the Republicans get back in mm -hmm. the majority, if they sandbag, I'm so fucking done with this fucking country. 
You motherfuckers got every fucking thing you need to fucking kill. To fucking go in there and fucking kill. And if they don't, fuck them. To who? <laughs> who are you trying to say kill? The Republicans, if they take the house and they just stand oh, oh, kill and they don't go in there at yeah. five the figure the speed. After all that shit, then yeah. I'm done, man. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> <Simple as that. laughs> There's some editing going on. Here. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god. Don't edit that shit. I meant every fucking word. Well, <laughs> I ain't taking it out. I'll bleep it, but I won't take it out. Really? Uh, no, you're right. Really? We've been sitting here watching this shit go down if they don't fucking kick Are you going to leave the country? Leave the country? Or are you going to shoot the country? Take it back. Take, take it back. Take this country. It's my fucking country, man. Why would I leave? I ain't no Venezuelan motherfucker. Okay, well, what are we going to do? I'm fighting for my shit. What are we going to do here? What are you guys going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand my fucking ground, dude. We do this I'm we don't make so far. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got to take well, it yeah. to the end. You ain't got to work. I live here, but I live here. Fucking ground, man. Yes, Whatever they do, they do. That's kind of where I'm at at this People point. It's like, they might they kill me. Yeah. They might. And you know, we made an episode like early in this thing and, and it kind of set the precedence yeah. for the yeah. overlying message of like, you know, set the, know the hill you're going to die on. No matter what that is, Know that you're never going to take an inch beyond at this point, and know that there's there's no way anyone's going to break beyond this point, right? Your I'm going to die before they take Your liberty this. belongs to you, and yeah. you're responsible for it. Nobody else, nothing else, no entity on this planet. It's just you. It's just you. Right. No Literally. promises. Right. No promises in this world. You know, I'm, it, me it, up. It, I'm still as free as I am. You know, I realize that. As long as you I don't have to watch what TV one die on, on what you're willing to do <laughs> that, yeah. that would be the eternal hell. Like I think I think Bob would start a prison gang. I heard a great quote. Yeah. Yeah. I felt Bob would watch the TV. I heard a great quote, 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 quote the other day. Force you to watch the show yeah. I want you to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Clockwork Orange. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Watch right. CNN hours after hours. I shouldn't even say that. You please edit that out. They could use that against me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that's a good idea. It was the rats on the cage, me. It's like, I'm going to watch TV. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I like to think that the whole thing is something that we can grin about and that we can fucking uh, it's all good, man. facilitate about and all that. But the truth of the matter is, if it ever happens, what happens? It's going to be fucking ugly.